Each year, the Queensland Government, through the Queensland Greats Awards, celebrates the extraordinary lifetime achievements and contributions of individuals and organisations serving sectors such as community, sports, science, arts, business, government and environments. Now on the 15th anniversary, we reminisce with some of the remarkable Queensland Greats who've been honoured over the years. Sister Angela Mary Doyle AO, 2001 Queensland Great. At the tender age of 21, Sister Angela Mary Doyle left her hometown in Ireland and boarded an old troop ship bound for Brisbane as a member of the Order of the Sisters of Mercy. After a short teaching post, Sister Angela Mary was called to nursing, a career spanning over 50 years, during which time she was hospital administrator for the Martyr for over two decades, helping shape it into the leading quality healthcare provider it is today. I'm very honoured to be a Queensland great and I was astonished when I was told about it. Um, despite my accent, I'm a very proud Queenslander. And I wondered why I was given that honour because there are so many wonderful men and women then and now who contribute an enormous amount to Queensland and I admire them enormously and it's wonderful to be included among those greats. I hope I have contributed something to Queensland. There's something that stands out in my mind that goes back to the early 1980s when um, homosexual men and particularly those with HIV and AIDS were regarded with hate and prejudice and they were completely ostracized and they, nobody was caring for them. Well, the Sisters of Mercy and the Martyr were founded for anyone disadvantaged, the sick, anybody else. So um, we offered, we put up our hand, we said we will walk alongside you. We will not impose our values on you. We're here should you need us. And with that began six or seven years of working closely with these men. It was a very special time in my life and I remember it with great love and great respect for those men. It was a wonderful time. What drew me to my chosen field? The truth is, I never wanted to come to the Mater. I've spent most of my life around the Mater, but I never wanted to come here in the first instance. I was a teacher, and I thought that's what I'd be doing. But there were shorter sisters at the time, and I got dispatched here. But quickly I noted the um, absolute devotion of the sisters and the doctors and the nurses and all the staff to the care of patients and I grew to love it. There have been highs and lows in my field throughout my life but what has really helped me is the freedom I have felt as a sister of mercy and somebody connected with the martyr to be able to reach out to people who are in need because that's what the sisters of mercy and the martyr are all about. So that's what really helped me. And the support of my sister, family, and all the friends I have, and they are numerous, really very good friends. Dr. Richard Lewandowski, 2004 Queensland Great. As one of Australia's leading craniofacial surgeons, Dr. Richard Lewandowski specializes in plastic and reconstructive surgery. In 1999, Dr. Lewandowski, together with his wife Sue, co-founded the Australian chapter of not-for-profit organisation Operation Smile, bringing children and young adults from developing countries to Australia for life-changing craniofacial surgery. Dr. Lewandowski is currently the Director of Surgery at the Mater Adults Hospital and, when not in the operating theatre, teaches medical students and plastic surgery trainees. What being a Queensland great means to me is that I'm a role model, not just to Queenslanders in general, but also in particular to people in my own profession who might choose one day to follow my career path, not just in specialising or making an income, but also in the humanitarian part where they could help others in greater need around the world. What drew me to my chosen field is somewhat Freudian. All the way through high school, I enjoyed architecture and science, and having gravitated through medicine, I ended up finally in plastic and reconstructive surgery, which basically gives me the best of both of those worlds. I'm also the sort of person who likes instant visual gratification, and I certainly get that from the reconstructive part of my work. The things that inspired me throughout the highs and lows of my professional career have been, on one hand, the ability to provide 
care for those in need and balance that with the available resources. And I always think that eventually the people in need will triumph, but again, that's a battle that will continue. Of my lifetime contributions, my greatest contribution to Queenslanders and Queensland as a state has been my ability to provide cutting edge plastic surgical services for the people and especially the children of Queensland. On the other hand, my other contribution has been the ability to make people aware that there are lots of people around the world who are much worse off and help to provide for them also. The Honourable Laneen Ford AC, 2007 Queensland Greats. The Honourable Laneen Ford arrived in Australia from Canada in 1954, adopting Queensland as her home. As Queensland's first female governor, Ms Ford has played a leading role in advancing the social and economic welfare of Queenslanders and made significant contributions to enhancing the status and interests of women. In addition to her work as Chancellor at Griffith University, she continues to serve on multiple boards across a range of institutions. When I became Queensland Great or was nominated, I thought I really didn't think it was going to happen and uh, it was just an uh, amazing feeling to think that I really did belong and that I really was accepted as an Australian and as a Queenslander and it's a great state and if you're going to choose to live anywhere, this is the spot. What drew me to my chosen field was widowhood. <laughs> my husband died. I was in an era when you were supposed to marry Prince Charming and he was to live forever and look after you. Uh, he got sick, he died, I was 31, and I had five children, so something had to be done to feed them, and uh, I went back to university and did a law course. I did law because I could study law in the morning while they were at school, come home, be mother all afternoon, put them to bed and go and study again at night. What has inspired me in the field? Um, well, I enjoyed the work when I uh, qualified and I uh, dealt with people all the time. I've always liked people and I think uh, that just kept me going. And of course, having the children that needed feeding at home, of course, that was the big push. Hmm. My greatest contribution to Queensland was the inquiry I did into the abuse of children in uh, government and church-run institutions. Um, there have been lots of highs in my career, I know. It was great to be governor and uh, it was a wonderful honour. But, uh, but the thing that was most meaningful for Queenslanders, I really believe, was uh, listening to those victims of abuse and uh, believing them. Philip Bacon AM, 2009 Queensland Greats. At a time when Queensland's art scene was in its infancy, Philip Bacon undertook the brave move of opening a gallery. Over the years, Philip Bacon Galleries has established itself as Australia's leading commercial gallery, attracting clients and representing renowned artists from around the nation and indeed the world, including Ray Crook, Charles Blackman and Margaret Ollie AC. What does it mean to be a Queensland great? It's, I guess everybody says it's such an amazing honour. I. I didn't believe it when it was offered to me, and I still really don't believe it. I look at the people, my, I guess you could call them colleagues on that wall, and I just think, what am I doing there? So it's a sense of wonder, really. What drew me to my chosen field? Uh, an artist friend of mine, Donald Friend, was once asked that question, and he said, I'm an artist the way a dog's a dog. There's sort of, who knows how these things start? I always used to buy pictures, and then I began gradually to sell a few. I was doing law at the university. I convinced my father that this is really what I wanted to do, so here I am. Who knows? I think it's a vocation, not a job. I like what I've done, and I love what I do. So it's very easy to be inspired by doing what you like and dealing with people, artists and clients who you admire. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an inspiration in itself, the people. I deal with and for. What is my greatest contribution to Queensland? I, I think it's possibly my involvement in the art dealing side of Brisbane and Queensland 
uh, the cultural improvements that have happened here so that now when people say, oh yes, you're Philip Bacon and from Brisbane, they used to say, and now they say, oh yes, you've got that great gallery in Brisbane. We were there last week for the, for the great show at Quagoma. We've been up for the um, Paris Opera Ballet. Queensland and Brisbane is now considered a great place to be from. We don't have to apologise anymore. Wally Lewis AM, 2011 Queensland Greats. Affectionately known as the King, former rugby league footballer and coach Wally Lewis is synonymous with all things Maroon. Considered one of the greatest players of our time, Wally spearheaded Queensland to dominance through the state of origin performances across the 1980s, captaining 30 games. Being rated a Queensland great is something that I think was a very moving moment. I can remember my wife uh, uh, sitting alongside me at the table at home uh, just saying, you've been given a, a huge rap, uh, it, it's an honour, congratulations. And it was a, it was a stunning moment, to, to be honest. Um, but just to have your, your name posted alongside some of the others that had been put there, I've got to say it was, it was a very moving experience. A lot of people ask me what drew me to, uh, to play rugby league and it was a, a pretty simple answer to give actually. I was born into a rugby league family. My dad was a former first grade rugby league player uh, with South and West in Brisbane and later a first grade coach with Winner Manly. My mum was pretty handy at sport herself. She represented Queensland uh, over a number of years uh, in netball and certainly enjoyed the opportunity that it presented for her. Um, and I was a mascot uh, for, the, for the footy teams as well. There was no doubt that by the time I'd reached school level, uh, my great interest in sport was going to be rugby league, rugby league or rugby league. And that was the only way that I was going to follow. That, that path though was a very enjoyable one and I certainly felt uh, blessed uh, to be presented with that chance by mum and dad. It's pretty easy to, uh, to make a judgement on what the inspiration was in the early days for me to, uh, um, to get to the top in rugby league. Uh, I was growing up here and um, both of my grandparents lived within 250 metres of this great ground here at Suncorp Stadium and we had the opportunity to, to come and park in their grounds, uh, to be able to walk to, uh, to the games that were played here on Saturdays and Sundays. But more than anything else, uh, I was always counting down the moments it was until Queensland were going to play here at, uh, at, at Lang Park as it was in those days. We got the chance to be able to see the Queenslanders give their level best and so many times uh, we left disappointed because uh, we were beaten by a much better New South Wales side or a New South Wales team that included a couple of Queenslanders. Finally, through State of Origin, we got the chance to be able to reverse those fortunes and uh, I can imagine that there would have been plenty of uh, young rugby league fans going home with a big smile on their face those days and um, I know that would have made every one of those players sitting inside the Queensland dressing room very happy that they'd achieved something. I think my greatest contribution to Queensland has been I've been one of the many figures out there proudly dressed in a Maroons jersey that allowed all of the fans that turned up here to Suncorp Stadium or the Old Lang Park, we allowed them to go home proud, um, particularly when we won those games. But I think the, uh, the more dominant issue, the one that used to make me feel happiest about being a Queenslander was that whether we won, lost or drew that game, the fans would go home, uh, they'd be a little bit disappointed but they'd always turn up the next time. They'd love to be able to support the Queenslanders, to be able to get given that opportunity to come back and support them all over again because if there's one thing that's great about being a Queenslander, it's that you never forget your mates. You always trust your mates. And that's a key figure that I used to like to deliver to the players once we got on the field. Fred Conway, 2014 Queensland Great. As a Queensland Parks and Wildlife Ranger and Indigenous Elder, Fred is a passionate and tireless advocate for preserving Indigenous culture and history through his diverse work at Queensland's Carnarvon National Park. Over the years, Fred has been instrumental in developing the successful program that sees young Indigenous people return to country as seasonal rangers, gaining employment and having meaningful involvement in the management of traditional lands. To be a Queensland great, Tall and proud, uh, and proud and proud as I could be, and as I said, not because of my ancestral background, but because of visitors from all walks of life that comes here and and listen to my talking about my ancestral background. That also was a great achievement that made me a very proud man and, and it's keeping my culture and our culture alive. That's what I feel great about. Growing up as a child, 
My grandmother and uncle had told me a great deal about the Carnarvon Gorge, you know, of course, which is our culture that he's also explained to me about, uh, especially about this gorge. Then one day I decided I'd come out here. That is after I've left school and got married and I came back to uh, brush up on what was told to me by my uncle and grandmother to tell my daughters and my rest of my other children about the significance about our culture. Came, came back here in the 80s and uh, I've been here ever since. And right all over that period of time, right up until 2005, that we took up, made up a program to bring in indigenous people from both sides of Bidger and Gurringbill people. That's what inspired me most of all, is talking about our culture, although we had different cultures to each other, but we got along very good, and it sort of made the younger ones uh, have an understanding about what is their culture, how it had happened, how did we prepare this and so forth. When I came back to here, I volunteered for nothing. And I fell in love with it and I've been here ever since. And that's 30 odd years ago. And uh, it brought me back and it made me feel that I was back in time with my grand ancestral people. And that's what inspired me to choose this place. And this is where I will be back again next year for sure. These extraordinary Queensland greats, along with all of the remarkable individuals and acclaimed institutions who have been bestowed this honour, are a true inspiration. Their dedication and commitment to Queensland has strengthened and shaped our state and will leave a lasting impression for years to come. Celebrating 15 years of Queensland greats.